Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Habarim. So here, watching this Anne Boleyn series, a lot of controversy. I don't know if you've heard about it. Anne Boleyn series, where they have, uh, what's it, Jodie Turner Smith? I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Correctly, They have her playing, this black actress, they have her playing Anne Boleyn, and everybody's saying, woo, woo, woo. Not everybody, but people are really ignorant or just caught up in um, generational racism. They're saying, oh, how would it be if a white guy play MLK or now, um, if this is what they're doing with history, Jesus can't no longer be white. Well, <laughs> if you're talking about Yeshua HaMoshiach, one of the Bible, based on true history, well, he wasn't white to begin with. But this is a very, very interesting series right here. Some say it was a big mistake to cast a black actress. It's not historical accuracy, but really... What about when history, at least the history, right, that white supremacy, so-called, has given us is not very accurate? I think this is really a classic and hopefully will be seen as a classic. I just really watched the first of these three episodes, kind of see where the trajectory is going. I mean, it's interesting because the only queen that was executed in England so brutally was... Anne Boleyn. So now, if you do a little search on Anne Boleyn, right? Even how they spell her name was it Anne Boleyn? Was it Anne Bullen? Was it Anne Bolina? <laughs> All right. So here, here, here's the actress right here playing Anne Boleyn in this um, three-part series. All right. Now, here's a couple of word picks we caught. We had done something on another channel, but we never got a chance to kind of post it up there. But here on the new channel, Rastafari Yehudim, Yehudi, Rastafari Jews, and elsewhere, we're going to seek to repost this. Please share, 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 like, share, and subscribe right here, here, here. Post this on your social media link because you got to get people to think. Now, understanding Anne Boleyn. Right, as they spelled her name now. But historically, Anne Bullen and Anna, Anna, and, and, you know, this is very, it's not confusing to us because we do our study. But which one did Anne Bolin, Anna Bullen, Anna Bolina, which one did she look like according to the traditional whitewash view of history? Did she like the first one? going from, um, let's go from left to right, right? Let's read it towards the facing of the faces. Was she like the first one, the second one, or the third one? What did the historical Anne Bolina, Anne Bolin, Anne Bullen, what did she look like? The one who's commonly called Anne Bolin. What did she look like? Historically, all these pictures look like they're historical pictures, don't they? They all look like, like they old pictures and everything. And you see one, you're like, okay, she must have been a white woman. But you mean one white woman, quote, unquote, looked like all these three different women? Something should tell you, hmm, very, very strange. You know, even though they, they distort the pictures of um, Henry VIII, even they still make him in the later days like a big fat meathead and everything like that. He still looks like the same kind of, got the same, you know what I mean? It's generally, even Santa Claus <laughs> still looks like Santa Claus, although, you know, <laughs> slightly different. But does she have a round face, a long face, uh, another kind of face? Okay, so here, this is what they've done in a lot of the things. Like, when we heard about this on this other guy's channel. We did a whole two-part series commenting maybe if ones and ones like this and it's interesting we'll post that up here as well so what they do is they they've chosen i'm talking about they they history they live they live they white supremacy history they live you know they they chose to like they they chose out of all these pictures we're going to show you the next quick one right here this is a quick video right here who is about to watch like the second and third episode the first one I said, now the written history, you know, the basic history makes a lot of sense. For example, why would this particular queen, this is the only queen of England that was executed. And she was executed very brutally. She's, she's called like a witch. She does witchcraft, a whole bunch of charges. She was having sex with everybody. I mean, who do they say that about? Black woman? Anyway, anyway, let's go on. So they chose, right, the, the white 
woman picture on the right hand side they chose notice what it says up there it says Anna Bolina hmm. Anna Bolina I can show you historically where some say it was Anna Ann with an E Annie right Annie Bullen and now they say it's Ann Bolin okay you know they can't get the pictures right they can't get the name right ah oh, man okay so anyway I think they got this one right right here with uh uh, was it Joey uh, Turner Lee? You know, with her portrayal. So far, so good. I'll follow up if the second and third episodes are not too really good, but we'll follow up on that. But let's just go through this really quick. So here's how they have it. It's on the channel, Channel Five, original drama. Annie or Anna. Sometimes they had the E. Sometimes they got the E. But here, Anne Boleyn. This is it right here, 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 here. So let's go right here. So this is the actress, right? Who plays the role? So far, so good. The that which is accurate about you know the narrative, some things in the narrative, it really works well in this casting. You know, we'll get into some of that. Hopefully, perhaps if you're interested, you you're interested in it. Let's just go through this right here. So this is another one. I noticed one thing. There is a still that they use, right, for the cover, right. And there's a still that they use. I'm actually looking at the, one of these put lockers, right? I'm looking at one of the put lockers, and this is a still that's using the put locker to couch doing some of these other like kind of players and everything like that, right? And I can tell you which one, so y'all can flag it down. But anyway, um, the still there, I could not find that particular still. I'll show you. It's something like this where you know, and that kind of, um, you know the historical English clothing and stuff like that. You know, a black woman looking like a queen. Because this black woman was a queen. Her name was Anne Boleyn. The only queen in England ever executed and so brutally. Right? They say that he really planned it, Henry the Eighth. They said the horse accident is what caused it. He just went crazy then. Annie's ways, and then they say, well, how can she be Anne Boleyn and, and old Bess? That's what they call the Queen of England, the first Queen of England. They said, how can she be redhead? You've never seen redhead black people? you never seen certain black people who have like a white parent and a black parent? Like a white father and a black mother? You've you never seen that before? Could we follow up maybe in another video, but you could go look it up. Real History WW. Check out Real History WW. All right, so boom, uh-oh. Notice, see, we want to actually take this picture here, the most happy, and uh, most happy year, this most happy year one right here. This is, this is her coin. This is the Anne Boleyn coin. The Anne Boleyn coin. Now, you may ask, or you should ask, you may ask, why is it smashed? They smashed the face. Will they do that to a white woman? <laughs> Since they put the white woman into a white man from whatever time. You know, because they, they lie so much about history. We really have to re-look at all of this right here. But this is a historical coin. Now, on real history and elsewhere, we're saying, hmm. Now, why would they do this? Hmm. Really disliked it. This is a coin, right? Uh, they smash it. Right? They smash it. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you white supremacy, whitewash magic. Because many of us, Real History, WW, and others have been not just talking about it, doing research and everything else to really connect the dots, right? Because we've been doing all this research on it. Give thanks. Hold, hold that. Thank you. I think we found it. Just hold that for me, please. Yeah. Doing research. Research going on right now. Like, share, and subscribe. Right? Let's get these numbers here. So, anyway, here's what's interesting. Since we've been talking about this, that even here it looks like a black woman, right? right? But, but then... Okay, people say, well, it's just a smash coin. Okay, so why would they smash a coin? I mean, have you seen any other English coins, historical coins smashed? Like they rolled over with a steamroller or something like that? Or hit it with some mallet or hammer? Hmm. Now I'm going to show you some... Oh, magic! This is magic! This is magic, historical magic. Because we've been talking about that this is another piece of evidence that proves that Anne Boleyn plus the black nobility, the black royalty, black nobility. Don't believe the Martin. There's this Martin, um, what they call it, conspiracy theory about the black nobility, like the oh, Illuminati stuff. But really, what they really are speaking about is when black people, when we rule the world, 
all a large part of the world right or parts of the world at different times so here's the original coin gonna show you magic now you see it now you don't so now they're telling us that this right here is a remake right of this one right here this is remade like this they said actually they're giving you the detail what her face looked like no no, 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 no. There's so many things that are wrong with it. You can look at the position of the cross. You can look at her breast. You can look at the angle of her face and everything. You can look at her neck. A lot of things are not right there. A lot of things are just not right with it. You can look at even um, the, the headwear that she's wearing. But they're now putting this one out to try to continue the lie. They actually did the redo of this coin. Because we was talking about so much, I say we, ones like myself, but mainly ones like Real History, WW, one of the top kind of researchers out there. But so many other ones were speaking about this. And not just black folks, because there are white people and other peoples who want to know the truth. Right? So here, look at this. This is a good split screen right here. You see the tools of the, of the deceiver, I mean the, cra the crafty people? There's a the crafty people's tools right there. Now this is a little different. If you notice this one, this one is a little different. Than this one, because there's a lot of different versions of it. To further confuse, doesn't that remind you what they did with the Anne Boleyn pictures? I showed you three of them earlier on, right? Earlier on, all right. We're doing this in timing right here. Okay, so most moose, the moose. Look how they spell most. M O O S T. The moose. Happy, happy with an I. Happy. I know. I know. Could they combine Latin? I know for years. Right, this was 15, I think 34, they say right there. This one is a little different. Let's look at her feet. A little different. See her face right there? It's a little different. Right? Possibly black, right? A little different. But notice what they do with the nose. It's almost like when they take a skull, like they took Tutankhamun, Tutankhamun's skull, right? And then they made him look like this, this really sickly, like sickly person and everything. It was just, I, I don't want to get into that one. Right That's a whole other thing. Right? Now, see, this is another version of their partial redo. See, I think when they started to redo it, like a real artist would recognize, oh, if I redo this more, it's going to be a black woman. So they said, okay, then do it like this right here. Right? Notice the nose. Notice over here, this redo right here. Notice over here. Right? Just to note these kind of nuances. Right? You guys pay attention to detail. Now, these are actually not the same, but very similar. They're versions. So now they have versions of it. Right? Versions of it. But I just can't get over the nose over here. This nose over here is just, just something about it. Right? So anyway, so this coin. Right? Now, <laughs> notice what they do with this coin right here. <laughs> Artistic Artist, uh, artistic rendition right here. And notice what they do with that. Totally changed it up right there, but mm, who knows they would say. Now, this is another one right here. This is this is said to be, some of this looks historical. Some of it looks historical, but you have to look at the detail. This is supposed to be Anne Boleyn. This is supposed to be Anne Boleyn, historically speaking. Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn. See how the picture does that right there? That's because it's a really high resolution. This will be Anne Boleyn, right? This will be Anne Boleyn here, right? And this will be Anne Boleyn here. And remember, see how her name is spelled? The B V. The V is a U. So, Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn Regina or Regina Angli, Anglia of England, right? And Boule, Bole. She was a she, she was a a Boule. I'm talking about the Boule before these latter day Boule. Not don't compare it with these latter day Boule. Right? No, I'm talking about the real boule. Okay, we'll hopefully we'll get into that. Boolean. Hmm? Mm, 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 mm. Okay. But then boule connection. Just Anne and the boule connection. All right? The uh, original. Original boule. Mm hmm There are some similarities. All right? But anyway, so here's the front and the back of the coin right here. Here's the back of the coin right here. Here's another version of it right here. Mm. Now, you think if the woman actually was black, 
like all the evidence, the real evidence points to in a non-calcified pineal gland people would see for themselves. If she was black, as we are making the point here, just for the sake of reasoning, argument, whatnot like that, do you think they would smash the coin? Do you think white people would do something like that, like smash the coin, like, you know, knock off the nose off the sphinx? You, you think they'll chip off the nose off of, like, Egyptian, you know, stuff like that? You think they would distort it? You think they would go into tombs, and clearly in the tombs the people were reddish, brown, and black, and they would paint over it again in books that would be published in England as white people, as light people and white people, and change their features? We could show you historical pictures where these artists went in tombs in ancient Egypt, repainted pictures... Right? That's the only way people could get it. They didn't have cameras at that time. They had the paint as an artist. And then now we can compare the actual paintings, right? Or the actual, you know, wall art with what the first white scholars did at the time, which shows what? <laughs> Racism? Denial? So here's the two. You know, these two are not the same. A good kind of split screen. You know, these two are not the same. Right? These two are not the same. Right? And then they try to say, well, this may be what she looked like. They're comparing this one with this one. Where they're saying, remember the picture we showed in the beginning? To say that there's three of them. All of them are named Anne Boleyn. All the pictures are dated or allegedly dated by pseudo-scholars and everything like that. Now, here's an interesting one. Which one did Anne Boleyn look like? You could tell the two diagonal, the, uh, the white woman pictures right there. You could tell it's not the same woman. You could tell it's not the same woman. So they both couldn't be from the historical time. You know, when people remember what the person looked like, people say, the person didn't look like this. You know what I mean? But note this one right here. I can't zoom in on this one on the top. But note that one on the top for a moment. That is preserved in a, what they call it? That was in a coin. In fact, what we're going to do with this one is we'll try to take a screenshot of this one and then we'll go over it again and zoom in on, on the one on the top uh, left-hand side. All right? Now, which one is Anne Boleyn? All these are said to be Anne Boleyn here. <laughs> okay, let's look at the ones on top. These are Anne Boleyn. Which one? All of them look historical. All of them look like old paintings, pictures. You can see them in a museum. And let's say this is the picture of Anne Boleyn. Which one? This one? All these the same person? Come on now. It's like when they do Jesus pictures. Especially the white Jesus pictures. What's interesting is that the Jesus pictures that are black, or the brown, dark brown, reddish brown, black pictures of Jesus, they look more like the same person. Have you noticed? Even though they're different artists, you know, and they're not exactly the same, but you can tell that it's like all of them are looking at the same person. Like we all are drawing the same person. We all drawing the same elephant. But then one person draws a dog, one person draws a rabbit, one person draws a snake. But we're all looking at this elephant. You, you get me? This is like what's happening here with this right here. You know, they're looking at one person, but they're all drawing something different. All right? Now, this one here, she played Anne Boleyn. Was there a hoopla about it? Her, her, how could she play Anne Boleyn? All right? In fact, she kind of got features that are not like the, the painting over there. Right? Then they do this right here to kind of like try to show it up. What we would like to do is take her picture and put the coin on one side. Why not? Put the coin un, un, untouched up, right? right? Anne Boleyn. Um, what's her name again? Just to make sure I have a name correct. Correct, correct. Jody Turner Force. No, Jody Turner Smith. Excuse me. Jody Turner Smith. I'm trying to go through this at, at a lively pace right here. This is her right here. Now, she does some blonde stuff and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, I guess she's an artiste. All right? An actor. All right? Actress, they say, but I think in England they say actor. Anyway, this is her in the, in the thing. This is her in the thing. This is the coin again. This right here. This is from um, Real History WW. It's going to read through this really quickly. It says, a, a portrait medal of Anne Boleyn inscribed A.R., Anna Regina, Anna Regina, the most happy anno 1534. Interesting, 1534. Wasn't that around the time the Ahmed Grand, the Ethiopia thing over there? You know? Mm. This, le this lead medal was made as a prototype to commemorate the anticipated birth of a royal son and heir. Anne lost the baby seven to eight months into the pregnancy. It is the only undisputed image of Anne Boleyn. Get that? The only undisputed image of Anne Boleyn. Note that 
Though the nose is deformed beyond recognition, the lips are undamaged and are those of a black woman. Now notice this one right here. If you notice some of them, we just zoom in right here. Of a black woman. So remember, this is a smashed coin. So that means it will smash, you know, the, the raising up for black lips, it will be, you know what I mean? Broader. This is one reason why. Very good observation, real history right there. Okay, now this right here, I don't know Lady Churchill. I know they've been doing a lot of stuff. She might be the one who, who redid this coin. It looks a lot like her. And she did the, the amblum coin to look like her right there. All right. Now this is supposed to be something up in a in, in like a church somewhere. Interesting. All right. We've seen other pictures like this where the picture was portraying a black person and a lighting. You could tell some of the lighting places. They're very crafty at this. They've been doing it for a while. This one is another one right here. All right. You can see even the lips a little bit right there. And we see other pictures like this where they have managed to how can you say lighting up lighting up the stained glass? Now this one right here, this is the one we were looking for. I think this is a high resolution, okay? Right there. I noticed but this one wasn't found easily attached. They use that other one that they use in the um like the stale. They use that other one. Okay. I don't know what this one's about, but we're gonna go to this one again. Okay. Was the real Anne Boleyn black? Someone did a video, we had caught this, was the real Anne Boleyn Black. I don't know what the conclusion is, but I know what the facts we have right here. This is the brother. We see a lot of historical pictures like this of black men, very clearly black men, because next to them were men that were white, you know? Um, and this is this other guy, kind of liked his outfit and everything, remind me of this outfit somewhat. You know, they do some wonderful costumes. This little Lawrence Fox guy, Flocks, a kind of a failed actor kind of guy who wanted to be the mayor of London and then lost. He, I think he only got 1.8 something percent. Don't quote me on that. Go look it up. He said, Anne Boleyn was a straight white female. Stick that in your diversity pipe. Diversity agenda is racist and pure and simple. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so they said because of this scene right here where she, she's like kissing um, the, what's, I forgot the character. She's kissing the white woman right there. They said, huh? Jane. Jane, yeah, Jane Seymour, Jane Seymour, yeah. She's kissing the white, you know. Even how they were plotting against her in the historical thing, right, would match what they would do to a black woman and what they did, historically speaking, to the black royalty and the black nobility. But he's just a little washed up actor who wanted to be the mayor of London. And we thought there was like a some hot lesbian scene or something like that. But when you watch the part, you can see what Anne is doing. And women who are not lesbians would do the same thing. You know, it's, it's male homosexuality is what the Lord says. You know, he, he basically says, death to that but that's that's bible stuff but here we're talking about history right so um <laughs> so right here yeah he makes it for for the record i think any act of any sexual orientation skin color and body type can play any character hence why it's called acting but it has to be consistent otherwise it's just discrimination shut up lawrence flocks only trans actors can play trans actors only gay actors should, should play gay actors what's he saying actors apologize for playing limb different characters Anne Boleyn has six fingers on her right hand did she yeah, well, this guy's just making nonsense that's what happens when you box him in a logical corner but black actors can play white limb different characters I don't know that's nonsense so they keep doing this they keep choosing this one we showed you about six seven different historical Anne Boleyn pictures that look like six or seven different white women, right? Six or seven different women who happen to be white, right? But right here, this is another picture of Anne Boleyn. So this person, Katie Woodland, says that she was white. What would happen if a white person played Martin Luther King in the film? What if a white man played an Indian? What if a white man played a Chinese man? What? Oh, that already happened in the movies and Fu Manchu and all that stuff. They they already done that. And how about Mammy, Mammy, uh, my, my, my Mammy? Remember that Al Jolson? Yeah, that already happened there. 
So other people go on and on and on and talk, da da da, and so the white man. Oh, this one was interesting here. They said, um, they said, Kandake, the Empress of Ethiopia, Queen. Okay, this was interesting. I'll leave it on there so you can pause it and kind of read it. You know, um, it's a good point. They're saying that we should be telling the story, like black producers, actors, or people who, who like and love, you know, black history, you know, or if they want to say African, Ethiopian, Israelite history. You know, there's a lot of stories that we should be doing and not just focusing on some of this. But this was, I think this is strategic right here. Again, they keep using this picture. I notice all over the place they've chosen this particular picture because they said, well, this makes make the best Anne Boleyn, except it's the least even historical of the white historical re, re, repaintings of Anne Boleyn. This is the actress right here, um, Jody Turner um, Smith. Yeah, I think that's maybe my name. Then they did something on Megan, Megan so forth and so on, and so forth and so on. And this brother here, he's played in a couple of things right there. And then this Candace, why knows Owens, you know, Candace Owens, right? Candace Owens here, you know, which I'm being a little comedical. Comedical? Comedical? So don't take that. You know, but you can tell she has different phenotypes, uh, you know? You can tell the, the two black women, right? Allegedly, right? But they have two different phenotypes. So that means all black people don't have the same phenotype. But if you look at Candace Owens and you look at a lot of, like, a lot of what they call the stereotypical, what they call the stereotypical, what they call that, that spoof black art, like with the big, big lips and big nose and all this kind of thing. She has, she looks more like that stereotypical. When the white people used to look at black people from a stereotype, it's like that Candace Owens was more the type they chose. While Jody Turner Smith is also one of the possible phenotypes. So you can see how they have different complexion of black people and different phenotypes. So we have to get out of this that there's only one look to black folks. Now here, historically speaking, very interesting is Prince Henry, right? Prince Henry. Later on, he'd be known as Henry VIII, right? Because some even debate that, well, he wasn't a black black, like a black African, but there was a lot of mulattoisms going on there. Now notice this is like very historical for what he looked like. Well, look at that curly hair. Look at that curly hair. Now this is another one of Henry VIII, Henry VIII by John Faber Sr. after Hans Holbein the Younger, um, Maison Tite, early 18th century, right? National Portrait Gallery, London. It just seems like they have a tint where they have him kind of dark right there, real history. This is interesting right here. This will be another Henry, Henry VIII. I don't really see a lot of white men that have like a Caesar I mean, yeah, they're in the army and stuff like that, but he ain't gonna have a Caesar, right? You know what they call a Caesar, right? Now, here's something else we'll leave on the screen. You can pause this right here. Please read this as well. Read this, very, very important. Black um, Real History, www, right here. Another pause, pause this, check this out as well, right? Now, here's what we're gonna show you. BBC, this also came from Real History. W W right? It says DNA study finds London was ethnically diverse from start, because what real history W W is showing that since he and many others have been putting out their things and showing historical evidence that's um, irrefutable, you gradually see it creep into the media, the BBC. They tend to be a little ahead of some of the other white people and Europeans. They'll throw something out there, maybe like this whole series coming out there, to try to like soften people up, you know, to the truth. A DNA study has confirmed that London was an ethnically diverse city from its very beginnings. BBC News has learned. They've been learned. We're learning them. We're learning them, people. They're learning, right? And this is from 23rd November 2015. But then a lot of us have already been saying this from the very beginning. People said, no, they had this view that it was only white, you know, pale white people all over the place. But this is the book you need to get. This is the book. I'm going to go through this really quickly because I'm a little bit longer than I intended to be on this right here. But Anne Boleyn was, was black. And history, white history lies. Anne Boleyn was black and white history lies. Okay? Now, 
when we say lies, we're talking about the lies of their history. There's some truth, like in this book right here, right? This is a very interesting book. We can go through this right here. It's a historical book, Memoirs of Secret Service, of the Secret Services of John McKay, Esquire, during the reigns of King William, Queen Anne, and George I, also including the true history of the rise, promotions, um, etc. of the English and Scots nobility. We're talking about black nobility, black royalty, officers, civil, military, naval, and other persons of distinction from the revolution in their respective characters at large drawn up by Mr. McKay, pursuant to the direction of Her Royal Highness, the Princess Sophia. Historical book right here, published from his original manuscript, um, as attested by his son, Spring Mackey, Esquire, the second edition. Now, this right here is 1,567, uh, where the D is 5, 6, 7. So that will be 17, um, was that 32, if we read that correctly, 1732. Just to show, note this, right, here, this one, just a, a couple of the people of the courts of Great Britain to prove, right, to prove, Black people in England, so forth and so on, right? Look look over here, right? Playing major roles. It says down here, what's underlined? He is of a middle stature, of a brown complexion, right? With a sour, lofty look. I've seen a lot of black men of a middle stature, of brown complexion, with a sour, lofty look. Even some nearly 60 years old, right? This is on... John, Duke of Buckinghamshire, and Lord Privy Seal, right? Here we have this character, this from the same book right here, Charles Lennox, Duke of Richmond, right? Charles, right? It says, is son of King Charles II by the Duchess of Portsmouth, right? He was carried by his mother into France in the reign of King James and left France in the reign of King William when he declared himself for the um for the religion and constitution of his country let's what, what, what is he, um, john mackey what, describe him to us based on your report for the princess he is a gentleman good natured to a fault very well bred and hath many valuable things in him is an enemy to business very credulous he's not incredible he's credulous i mean trustworthy well shaped Black complexion, much like King Charles. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, John Mackey. No one they suppress that book. Thank you, Google. Right? It says well shaped, black complexion, much like King Charles, not thirty years old. Mm, mm, mm. Quickly, right here, you can look at this. Zooming in for yourself. This one right here is um, Mr. Muthan ambassador to the king of portugal let's just go to his description he is a man of intrigue but very muddy in his conceptions and not quickly understood in many things in his complexion and manners much of a spaniard what's this much of a spaniard oh he goes on a tall black man 50 years old mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. so when one's like uh, Candace Owen, these pseudo intellectuals. Look at the nobility of Scotland. I right? just got a few of these. Nobility of Scotland, the Earl of Arrow. Middle paragraph right there. Describe him, the Earl of Arrow. Right? It says, The present Earl hath lived retired since the revolution. French Revolution? Revolution, Revolution. He is of a brown complexion, middle stature, towards 70 years old. All right, but then they have Charles, Duke of St. Albans, St. Albans, St. like St. Albans, Queens. <laughs> you know why a lot of these places that we be in now in the diaspora and exile, we, it, 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 it seems so realistic, right? You know, we be in these places and they remind us of other places where our people were and were persecuted and pushed out. Anyway, he is a gentleman every way the bond natural. The bond of good nature, the bond, the bond natural, well bred, doff not love business, is well, um, is well affected to the constitution of his country. 
What is he? He is of a black complexion, not so tall as a Duke of Northumberland, yet very like King Charles. Remember, we said that King Charles, well, John Mackey said that King Charles in his historical document was black. Oh, there was another one down here. There was Fitzroy, Charles Fitzroy, a Duke of, um, of, Grass, of Grafton, right? It says down here that he is a tall black man about 25 years old. Right? Some of the descendants will be put on slave ships and sent over here, broke, busted, and disgusted, and then they would try to put them in slavery. You know? Exactly. Uh huh. So here we have Ford, Lord Grey of Work. Work. Sound like work. 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 Right? He is a thin, brown, handsome man. You don't say. Thin, brown, handsome man. Right? And then right here, this is Andrew Fletcher of Salton. Go all the way down to the bottom right here. Right? It says, he have written some excellent tracks, but not published in his name, and hath a very fine genius. Is a low, thin man, brown complexion, full of fire, with a stern, sour look, 50 years old. Right? And that stern, sour look, they knew, they probably felt the, the, the premonitions of what was coming white supremacy, right? Here, 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 this man right here, okay, black, brown, black complexion, much like King Charles, I think this is a repeat right here, thin brown man right there, right? Here, he's a black man right here, John Archbishop, Archbishop, Archbishop of York, right? And it says that he is a black man and 55 years old. This one right here, I don't think we touched on this. Sir Stafford Fairborn, Vice Admiral, says he is very brave, much of a man of honor, loves play and a bottle a little. A little. And it says, half good sense, is fat, swarthy, like they say about the Queen of England, the first Queen of England, she was swarthy. That's why she put so much white makeup on. I mean, what white person who's pale put a bunch of white makeup on? Anyway, swarthy of... A good, what it says, of a, of a Moorish complexion. Swarthy of a Moorish complexion towards 50 years old. So, people, people, people right here. Handsome in his person, a brown man turned to 50 years old. Colonel Matthew Almere, Vice Admiral of the Fleet. So, we're going to conclude right there. There's a couple of other ones. Check out the book. It's a great book. Nonsense of white skin evolving to increase vitamin D absorption. You've heard about that? They said that white skin evolved to increase vitamin D absor absorption so they can absorb more vitamin D. Uh, 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 uh. That's been debunked. <laughs> the Journal of Investigative Dermatology. <laughs> That's been debunked. That's been debunked. You know, all these kind of ideas, false rumors, just to get around the fact that many of our people, just Ann Seymour, I've seen black women. I know mother my but my mother's church lady looks just like this. Her features, you know what I mean? Features looks just like that. So this is also Charles, um, you can see where it appears to be a picture of an albino, but it's kind of interesting because as he says, some t for some, sometimes for unknown reason, this is the Palace of Westminster, um, Prince uh, Chambers portraits. Sometimes for unknown reason, the albino usurpers do not destroy portraits of black royals. That's true. Instead, they tried to whitenize the picture to make it appear to be a picture of an albino. That is the case with this portrait of Arthur, Prince of Wales. You see him right there? You know, even look like some Ethiopians, right? They, they go standing up there, right there, right? Um, and this is another picture of what's his name? This right here is Anne, Queen, was Queen of Great Britain and Ireland in 1702 until her death. She was the daughter of King James II and acceded to the throne after the death of William III in 1702. The Hunter and Museum, like where is that? Seeing a lot of, uh, you know, people can't see it for themselves, right? I can't help you. This great composer here, Ignatius um, Sancho right here. Right, you know, very, very clear, you know. Of course, if I say he was a musician, an excellent musician, you can get it. Look at this dude right here, this black man with this hairstyle. You know, we always had that, right? We thought it was outgoing. So this is supposed to be the Queen of England, like the daughter of, you know, this is some of the other pictures, Anne Boleyn, 
We'll touch on that maybe another time right there. This is supposed to be a young Elizabeth right here. You know, and they say, well, how can she be a black woman? And I don't know if this is very accurate, but there's something about this that reminds me of a child of like a mixed, mixed parentage, right? And there's a lot of mixed people out there that you look in the mirror and you could tell people be thinking, some people think you this, some people think you that, right? This right here was a German uh, prince right here, Prince Charles um, Edward Stewart, the Stewarts, remember the Stewarts? The Stewarts was when they ran out. They still had a lot of black blood, but at some point they became more mulatto looking. I mean, if you just keep marrying, you have black as your ancestors, but you marry white people and you marry white people, you marry white people, you'll see a little bit of it there. Pictures all over the place. All right, this is this new thing. Now they're trying to show us these kind of things and say, see, it wasn't with the, mine was the Ethiopian pictures. Like this will be from Anne Boleyn's, um, her, her religious book. It looks like some of the Ethiopian books from that same time, that same time period. Okay, that's, okay, that's black Jesus. All right, not black Jesus, that's Jesus. That's he was black. All right, um, and this is some more pictures. Okay, so we're going to conclude this here. Do we have any, let's just scroll through this because that's going into another aspect. You know, when he was talking about, well, well now, like, like Jesus and all that black stuff. Well, look, this is the fact of the matter. So the same thing has happened with Anne Boleyn. When we're saying that she's black and showing proof and showing their inconsistency of lies, you see what I'm saying? It's the same thing like right here. We show you, well, this picture, the one on the left hand is much older than the one on the right and it's the original of the one on the right, but you're only used to the one on the right. That ain't right, but it's white. Okay, so right here, some more historical pictures for y'all, but don't worry about that. We'll pick up on that another time. And I think we are right now a little out of our time right here. And this was much longer than we expected it to be, brothers and sisters. But we are sisters and brothers and others. We'll conclude right here with this still right here. And there we go right there. All right. Be well, be well. Like, share, and subscribe.